Good evening all and um, welcome to the second uh, in the series of the AgriLeader Labour Lifecycle uh, webinars, uh, which tonight we're going to be focusing on onboarding uh, and how to get people off to the right start. Um, I'm Mark Campbell, one of the AgriLeader team uh, and I'm pleased to, to be with you uh, this evening to, to, to go through this, this, this webinar. So let's cover just a few uh, bits of housekeeping. Um, so, as you know, all attendees will be muted um, and we're aiming to, to, to wrap this up by eight o'clock this evening, so just, a, just an hour long. Um, the webinar will be recorded um, and it will be made available to everybody um, after the event and also it will be on the website uh, and on various catch up uh, uh, social media and various opportunities uh, for that. There's also a survey, um, so at the end of the, the broadcast uh, there will be a survey there, so please um, as always with any of uh, the AHDB events and information, uh, your feedback is hugely valuable uh, and we can utilise that to, to steer how we spend your levy and how we develop more, uh, more resources. Um, so this is an interactive webinar. We really, really want to have um, your opinions and your questions. Uh, so if you haven't used GoToWebinar before, uh, up in the corner of your screen, there's a little orange uh, arrow which opens up a box. Uh, and on that box there is a questions panel so please feel free to type in your questions uh, and then we'll endeavour to ask um, I'll, I'll ask those uh, to both of our speakers so without further ado a bit of an introduction so onboarding um, is more than just a box ticking exercise um, beyond meeting uh, the legalities of training compliance accreditation um, uh, onboarding can help uh, win hearts and minds and carve a stronger direction of travel and create that uh, one cohesive team or that one group of people uh, within a business. Um, here at AHDB, uh, we've recently launched our, our Labour Lifecycle uh, set of resources, which can be found on the website, uh, which is a library of online uh, information and resources which will help you as farmers uh, to better manage your people. Um, whether it's from working out a role um, that you're looking to fill or whether it's updating your staff handbook um, or whether it's putting the mechanics in place to develop uh, one of your people on, in your business. Um, there's a lot um, to do um, and all against um, a backdrop of farming that's facing some huge challenges and also a massive um, competition for, for skilled labour, um, which is becoming more and more difficult um, to find with the challenges that the world's facing. So I'm really, really pleased that we've got um, two great, great um, guests and speakers this evening that are going to um, help uh, and discuss their experiences and their insights uh, around the onboarding process uh, and how uh, they've experienced them inducting staff uh, in, into their businesses. So um, yeah, let's, let's, let's get to know. We've got David Bell, um, who's a mixed farmer from East Fife in Scotland. Um, and if he honks his camera on, and we've got Marie Moore, who's the Associate Director um, for Organisational Learning and Talent and Inclusion at Coca-Cola. Um, David, Marie, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, and we're really pleased to have you uh, on board with us uh, to, for this bit of discussion. So, David, um, we'll start with you. Um, do you want to give us a little bit of an introduction to you, your business, and, and uh, yeah, about how you've landed yourself uh, on this webinar with me? Uh, yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Dave Bell, a uh, mixed farmer uh, up here in East Fife, Scotland. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, next slide, please, Mark. Um, so, Mixed farming with uh, beef suckler herd, um, cereal, larval operations. Um, we do potatoes as well, um, and we let out uh, vine ground for peas. So we have a full uh, full rotation between that, and we also do environmental areas um, in the agri environment climate scheme, um, and uh, yeah, um, livestock above the ground and below the ground. Uh, is, is quite a quite a good way of looking at it uh, um, with uh, mixed farming and uh, stuff like that. And um, next slide, please, Mark. Um, so we've got uh, and currently we have a <clears throat> full time team of three, um, and as you can see, uh, a varying uh, varying uh, tenure with us so far. Um, but 
really established um, uh, time with us, um, 25 years, 10 years, and the most recent uh, addition, uh, hit his two-month anniversary yesterday, I think. Um, so uh, so uh, that's why I've ended up on this, on this call tonight uh, with my experience of, uh, of a new, new team member. Um, but to give some context, uh, we've, uh, we have restructured over the last kind of 10 years, uh, had a full-time team of eight, um, and, uh, and with efficiencies uh, and some, some lean management and empowering the team, as well as uh, some, some reduction in scale uh, and, and taking off the bits of the business that weren't performing, um, we've, uh, we've uh, reduced our, our team size. But, it's all been done naturally through retirement as well, so um, so it's been quite uh, quite easy in that respect. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, um, it's a it's a pretty good team, and I'm pretty happy with where we are and what we have. Anyway, so so yeah. Um, the one of the points you wanted me to do was yeah. Um, so yeah, and <laughs> um, that's where where we currently are. And I think, unless you have any probing questions uh, about that, go straight on to Marie. I think you're on mute, Mark. Well spotted, I am. We had to have one of those saying that for this evening. But no, thank you for that, uh, David. It's a uh, yeah, really interesting, fairly small team that over over a period of time and through various people moving on and things like that, we, we, we've become quite smaller. Now to Marie, Coca-Cola, and a lot of people are gonna be wondering what, how, why, where, where the join and the synergies are between the UK farming industry and the, the global business that, are, that is Coca-Cola. Do you want to introduce your, yourself and give us um, a bit about what you, you get up to at Coca-Cola? Yeah, thanks so much. I'm um, I'm really delighted to be um, part of this this panel today, and it's been great over the last couple of weeks. Um, the interactions with with Dave and, and myself and Mark, and just actually the the light bulb moments or the aha moments where we go, that's the same for you as it is for me, um, and and that's been both ways. Um, so I think hopefully um, I can share some of the learnings that we've had as a large corporate organisation, and um, but also I think ho well hopefully give you all the confidence that just because we're a large business doesn't mean we get it right. And, uh, you know, we've been on a massive journey ourselves at, at, at Coca-Cola. So, um, Mark, if you could move us on to the next slide. Um, so I'm I'm Marie Moore. Um, I'm in a newly created role at CCP. And I think that's an important point to note because um, we, we haven't... Um, um really focused i think on employ on the employee um in terms of the employee journey employee development uh, employee onboarding um and so last year um we've done a, a, a big internal engagement survey we do them sort of every 18 months and it um it really highlighted the fact that people weren't sure of their role in the business and um, what the longer term plan was for the business the strategy and, and all those things so um so my role was developed to try and um look at you know the talent journey so how we recruit you know from from hiring people right the way through to when they retire um and and that development journey and that career journey that they'll they'll have um and, and so it's been really interesting to having worked for the company for for 11 years to suddenly be in a role where um you get the ability and, and opportunity to review um that kind of uh, of level of detail and, and you know the for me, the employees are centre to everything. So people make our business. Um, but just to give you, I, I guess, the, I, some of the the, the, the thinking or, or some of the stats around the, the business. So um, yes, we're Coca-Cola. Lots of people don't know that 98% of the products that um, we sell in the UK are made here in the UK. So the biggest part of our business is actually manufacturing. Um, and people are often surprised by that. Um, so yeah, 70% of our, our business is, is manufacturing. Um, and so you can see our GB operation sites, um, a, a large site in East Kilbride, a smaller site in, in Morpeth, um, um, the largest uh, manufacturing, soft drinks manufacturing um, site in Europe, in Wakefield, which is just down the road from me. Um, and, and, and still, you know, when I go there, still in awe of the speed of the lines, you know, the people that you meet, the conversations that you that you have. 
Um, we have a distribution um, logistics team in Nottingham, um, and they're the ones that sort and fix getting products from A to B uh, and then B to C, which is um, another interesting dynamic to the business. Um, and then we have two manufacturing sites in Edmonton and Sidcup. Um, our head office is in Oxbridge in London. Um, and then Milton Keynes is our cold drink centre. So that's where we um, uh, send out all of our equipment. So the chilled fridges you'll see in corner shops and, and the um, soft drinks machines that you'll see in, in pubs and restaurants. So so you can see there, um, you know, some, some of the stats around, around that. The interesting point about our manufacturing and our operations team in particular is the fact that the, our average life of service in those roles is 16 years. So I start to see some of the similarities with Dave around, you know, people, they join and, and they stay with us. Um, and so, so what we tend to see is um, really good um, experience builds, um, you know, people join on, on apprentice programmes and, and working their way through their adult life. But what that is, I guess over the last few months has given us a bit of a, a, a shock to sort of look and go actually that population's aging and 25 percent of our manufacturing workforce are going to retire in the next five years and so that's been another jerk i think for us to think about gosh you know do we have the right onboarding process and how are we how are we bringing new people into the business so um next slide please mark um so we spent a bit of time doing some research and I guess we're quite fortunate that we, you know, that we have budgets available to do that. Um, but this is pretty common sense, I think. So when you take a step back from it and you think, gosh, you know, you've invested in, in research by agencies, I'm sure many of you are, are sat there going, actually, yeah, this makes this makes a lot of sense to me and, and, and where my farming business has, has been and where it's heading to and, and the challenges, especially with the labour market. So we know in the UK that it's really tight at the minute. So some of our key challenges around how do we diversify our workforce? So manufacturing for us is still very male dominated um, and we want to diversify that workforce and bring um, you know, female talent into, into, um, into manufacturing. We know there's that competition, um, we call it frontline, but those more junior sort of entry level roles, the, you know, the, the sort of um, lower to mid, mid pay scale roles. And there's a real demand for people with talent or specialist skills. Um, and I'm, again, I'm sure that's exactly the same in, in your industry. Um, and that's led us to three sort of big opportunities. So a personalise our employer brand, diversify how we attract people into the business. So where we recruit, how we recruit them, um, et cetera. And then how do we leverage our candidate experience? So it's that piece of right from the first interaction with us, right the way through to how, when they retire, how do we want to you know, to, to, to work with people and treat people. And I think all of those, those three things are all focused on people. Um, and so it is about putting the person at the heart of everything that you're doing. So, you know, you have to now, for especially for the younger generations, appeal to um, the hearts of, of individuals. It's not always about money now. Um, and certainly when I was looking at, at work and promotion for me, um, being a baby boomer generation, um, it, for me, it was about how much money I could earn and how quickly I could earn it and how quickly I could get up the ladder. For, for, for you know, for millennials and Gen Z sort of younger age groups, it's not so much about that. A, a lot of them are really interested in the development they can be given, the culture, how it feels to work with you. Um, and only an individual and a small team and, you know, can make that happen as part of a larger organisation. Um, so next slide, please, Mark. Um, and there are loads of industry um, insights. So this is a really busy slide and you, you don't need to just sort of know the detail, but I thought I would share it because you might want to look back later. But um, and again, this isn't this isn't rocket science. And, and you think, oh, gosh, you know, why didn't we think about this ourselves? Um, but, you know, recent research that, that uh, an organisation called Corn Ferry, which we use quite a lot, and another organisation called Gartner, they're all doing similar research in this area. And they're saying that people, you know, the, the, in the conversation that they've had in the last 12 months, the, the one that had the highest impact on them um, was around performance in, um, related conversations. If they were in a formal setting, so like do you know a, a formal sort of appraisal or um an end of year review for example um that that was sort of 53 percent of those conversations happened then whereas less than half of those conversations took place in an everyday environment and dave and i were talking about this not so long ago and um, i think it was just earlier this week but 
you know, these conversations don't have to be formal. You, you don't create culture and you don't create a want for someone to stay with you as an organisation or, or as a leader um, by having these formal sit down conversations. And we are quite a corporate organisation, but it doesn't work for us in supply chain. You know, it, people are on the lines for 12 hours a day, four days on, four days off. They're working nights. Um, you know the working days and and then you know they're fixing they're, they're always they're always there and actually those coffee chat conversations are probably more impactful than those more formal ones people don't open up and you don't get to see the true person if you're doing formal tick boxes so um so that was one of Dave and I's reflections Dave was like oh yeah you're an HR person so you'll have templates and toolkits yeah we do <laughs> and I am an HR person and that is part of my job but we don't say you have to use it because the power comes in that in that conversation and, and just that bottom one there you know conversations that make people feel motivated in their work and 19 percent of the people feel clearer about the work um, and career objectives and i think that's really key no matter the size of your business you know making sure that people feel they understand what their role is the part they play in your business you know how how much value you have in them as an individual and how you want to see them succeed is worth any other conversation around financial reward um or you know even promotions especially in the early days so so hopefully there's a little bit there that gives you a bit of an insight of what we've what we've done our onboarding journey was was non-existent really in in, in our manufacturing side of the business and and so making sure that we have those reminder moments for managers to have those conversations it, it, that's the habit you need to build um, and again you know we've we spent months looking at different ways of doing it and you know different you know video messages we've been able to record and share widely and broadly with with teams so that managers aren't having to recreate content and i think that's where the labor life cycle um you know that that will that will really help i think this industry with having content that's there that you can move and, and think about and, and consider how you apply so um so yeah hopefully that was was a useful intro, Mark. Brilliant, thank you, Marie. That's absolutely um, fantastic. And let me just, uh, I'll stop sharing for a minute so we can uh, come back in. Just um, to build on that point, and I'll start with you, you Marie. You, you, you talked there about the, your onboarding process and procedures were non-existent in the manufacturing side of the business, which is the key bit. What, what has been the journey? Uh, how long ago to um, putting something in place in terms of your onboarding process yeah i, I think it, it's interesting because although it was non-existent there was things happening if that makes sense so there was the lack of consistency um and so you know people didn't know what to expect and then you'd hear good things and you'd hear more challenging things and then you'd see the retention levels so people you know coming in and leaving really quickly in certain sites and locations and when you start to dig in you can see that you know there wasn't a you know a good structured you know induction it could be you know one of the things we've, we've introduced is buddy in so um you know when, when someone new comes in the biggest thing to try and help them with isn't so much the job or the task it's more about where do they fit in the team because actually you spend a lot of time at work and you know having somebody that can put their arm around you and kind of bring you along and help you settle in in those first few days and those first few weeks is really is really important so and um, that that was kind of where we started we, we knew that there was there was corporate stuff that we wanted to share but let's be honest a lot of us will do that research before before we join a company or actually it doesn't really float our boats so you know the, the corporate stuff yeah you have to do and the legal stuff you have to do all of that kind of training but you know the, the, the feel and, and it's hard to you, you, you can't measure it really it, it's that conversation with individuals how you make them feel in those first few weeks is, is key and that's a massive mind shift a mindset shift um especially when you've got a lot of work to do it's very processed you, you've got lots of measures in place so you know how how quick your lines run and how effective it is how much downtime do you have how many changeovers are you having how many stops in production are you having all of those metrics become really important because they're the business drivers but you have to take a step away from that to invest the time in, in individuals so we had to work really hard some people were more on board with it than others um and we're probably still not there yet if i'm if i'm completely honest um but you know i think once we'd identified that probably the back end of of last year and then we sort of we pulled together a, a group of people that are passionate about it because you can't always people that don't want to be involved probably are the ones that are going to derail any of your thinking and your and your ideas so we brought a 
a couple of people from each of the sites together to say, you know, how how could this work for you? Because what works in a sales function when everyone can be pulled off the road or can do virtual sessions is very different to people that are on a on a fixed site. So, um, so we we did a few we did a few things at, at the smaller sites and we took some learnings from that. And then by June June July this year we had a flow a structured flow that anybody could lift as a manager or a leader and then implement into their into their sites and again it's it's not a heavy slide it's not a heavy toolkit with lots of checklists it's more of a don't forget to you know make sure you've you know try and build that rapport try and build that relationship and make sure that you know you're checking in on not just the job you know how are you finding the job but you know, how's this working for you you know how's your work-life balance you know is are, are you worried about anything you know some of those early conversations are key Brilliant, thank you, That's Really, 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 really interesting, David. To, to bring you in now, you, you stated you're a very well established team. You've just had a new employee um, replace someone that's been with you for thirty odd years. What did you do with this new employee um, to, to bring him into the business um, with uh, a fairly established couple of couple of individuals um, already on the farm? Thanks. Um, yeah, well, they are established and. Uh, and uh, known them a long time, and worked them a long time, but we're still not at Marie's stage of uh, putting your arm around them. Uh, we're, we don't have that touchy feely just yet, um, but you never know. There's always times. Um, so um, yeah, with a, with having an a established uh, a work team uh, over the years, and we've not had turnover. Uh, you, you know, um, you know, with a, with with all. Um, um, uh, Without being arrogant, I, I'm doing something right. I've got a team sticking with me, and uh, uh, so they're so they're, um, they're 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 relatively uh, happy and settled. Um, but um, really fearful of the current labour market, so um, uh, was was actually quite worried about bringing someone in or trying to find someone. So it, it was is that mindset of of if I was going for a job, how would I want to be attracted to to a job how would i want to be how i mean it goes back to the the advert i i, I, pre, I put out there and um the wording like progressive forward thinking engaged you, you use all these key words and and you know they may be faff but they're they you get the right person and and the right person who reads that comes through and um and so it was quite a new experience for me to take someone, but I, I knew what I wanted and, and how I wanted to, to be with a new employee rather than my established team. Um, and and it's, it gives you that chance to, to start fresh and to, and to maybe uh, renew the direction you want, the, the, want things to go. Um, um, but obviously, uh, being heavy on the livestock side of things, it was, it was key that this, uh, this new team member wanted to get dirty. And, and not get uh, afraid of getting dirty and things like that. Um, and uh, I'll take that as a compliment from your daughter, Mark, that, she, that I get the heart there. So, uh, I just wanted to come and say hello, Dave. She missed uh, both of you a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, uh, bring me back to the question, Mark. Yeah, what did you do to, to bring this new member? What were the kind of things that they put in place um, to bring this new member of staff into the business um, to induct and involve them. Think about it. I mean, you, so before you, you don't, they don't just turn up. Um, you, you talk to them. You, you engage them with their their, their CV. You, you read their CV or their email if they don't put CV together. Um, you 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 start that. That's the start of the conversation. It it feels one way, but you know they're they're con, uh, engaging with you and you're reading that. So you're engaging. So that starts your your, the way you read somebody and the way you get a feel for them and to bring them on and uh, you, you know you, so you speak to them on the phone when you can uh, and you start that step and, and it's all about finding the right fit for the team and the right fit that gets what I'm trying to achieve here and what I want how I, I think they're going to fit with the rest of the team established team and as long as, as much as my guys are great they have their own way of doing things as well and it's very hard for anyone new coming into an established working setup when they're um from from that um, and then come out we have a chat we, we I walked around the farm steadying you know it's just so it's not a so it's not a face-to-face -face 
where it's uh, it's it's very uh, organic. The the walk around, you know, pointing at you know, just looking at silage bales or or the cattle in the field, um, looking at the cold store, just a feel for the steading, so it's not so intimidating to somebody because you want them to feel welcome and you want this new team member to be at, at home. Uh, there, the fact that he's got a tied house as well, he's brought his family. Um, you know, it's it's really um, it's his home as well. So you have that that added responsibility to to make sure you get the right person, so you don't you don't upheave his life for for the wrong opportunity. Um, yeah, so making sure that that person really is is the right fit and and having I mean, the good interview process and and then checking in. Um, as, as, as they started, which is yeah, really interesting. So to but move, also, I, I, I wasn't afraid to be to be wrong either. I mean, with as much as you want the right fit first off, as much as it's going to cost, it's costly or it, it's it's frustrating and timely. Um, I'm quite happy to make a mistake and, and get wrong because I need to recalibrate myself of what I'm looking for. And, and and this is realistically, it's my first proper proper intake. Um, so I want to learn from it, and, I, and if I make a mistake, I can I can do that better next time. Hopefully, it won't be for a good few years. Uh, but you you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Do and and be open and honest. With yeah, them. and and to be fair, it's the only way we learn, isn't it? If we if we, we do make mistakes, um, the or, only way. We learn. Or we're having a great webinar and uh, using the uh, labor of life cycle uh, stuff. So yeah, completely unprompted. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So moving forward, and now everyone's met both of my twins, which is which is all which is which is good. From both your perspectives, um, what do you why do you feel that this onboarding process um, is really important? We've established that it, it doesn't have to be this um, process where you bring someone out of the business. It can be it can be done on the hoof and be done within um, the day to day work. Um, what why do you? Think it's so important for both the business perspective, but also from the employee perspective. Do you want to go first, Murray? Yeah, well, let, let's be honest. Our, all of our time is precious, isn't it? So I can only imagine for for farming, you know, how how much you know more precious your time is than than you know than the likes of mine. So I think it's it's really important that when you do invest in the time that you're making to you know write a job description or you know contact candidates or you know bring them onto your onto your properties and show them around that that's a huge commitment from you as as well um, and and so when you do find that right person um, you don't want to let them go you know and, and Dave, Dave said it there you know sometimes we make mistakes and that's absolutely fine you know let, let's be honest we may make them all the time and learn from them but you know if you're investing all that time up front why wouldn't you then invest the same type of, of support especially in the early early days but then ongoing to make sure people stay with you um and again you know we know jobs are there's plenty of jobs out there so if you're a candidate looking for a role the, there's so many jobs now that people that could could join and apply for and this this part of the interview process now isn't about you interviewing candidates about candidates interviewing you to see whether or not you're the the organization or the or the or the person that they want to work for so it's very much now a two-way a two-way thing and, and not just that you know the employer looking looking for the right person so um so yeah it, it, i mean you can bring people on and you know very quickly they either you know come to work and do half a job or are, are half-heartedly involved in the job because they're not sure of you know the value that they're bringing or or, or the, you know your expectations so um it's, it's really important that we invest that time um and it is it's time well spent you'll then get that long long service that, that Dave's been talking about, you know, 25, you know, years, 10 years, people stay with you because you make them feel like they're part of the team and they're a valued part of the team. Yeah, I think that's really, really important. That's that, like you say, the investment of time, but also that two way process. It's gone of the days are you will come and work for me 75 hours a week and I will pay you whatever. And you should be happy with that. It is that two way process about understanding what the employee wants to get out of the business and how they can be part of that business um, to help the business achieve its goals. David, what about yourself? What what do you feel um, um, is really the benefits um, to both the business and the employee from this process? Um, well, firstly, it's uh, good that you're, uh, you're you're advertising for a part time job there at seventy five hours a week. Uh, the rest of us do full 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 weeks. But uh, but yeah, but 
joking aside, you know, we have to realize that that's not what we offer now. We we have to be a lot more um, a lot more accommodating and a lot more modern because uh, we are in competition with other industries. So we have to realize that the old days aren't there anymore if we want uh, if we want a good team around us. Um, one of the things uh, to highlight is we're, we're a business. You know, we are here to make money and our time is precious, but it's that return on investment. So if I'm, if, if I'm taking myself and I'm walking around and I'm um, spending more time with that new start, that new team member, uh, that investment comes back tenfold because because they're getting the right culture. You're, you're building your culture and you're building your efficiencies because because they're doing it how you want it because you're there with them for that and and it, it's just it's that investment of your time yes they're there to work with you or for you however it, you can't just start and that's them leave it to their own devices you have to be there and 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 because uh, because at the end of the day it's, it's our responsibility if if something happens uh, as the boss uh, you're the one in court if something goes wrong uh, or if you feel your uh, quality assurance and you can't sell your produce, um, it's it's us. So think about it that way as well. That the more we we guide and the more we uh, engage that culture uh, for the team, um, it comes back to to pay for itself. No, that's again the compliance piece, which is we're not going to beat people with a stick. But you, have, there are responsibilities on both parts, and if people have got full buy-in to the business, then they're going to be more compliant, and uh, and they're going to hopefully and do their best for the business, which will, will, will win on on all sorts. So just building on that, um, and we've talked um, about um, the process, not necessarily with Coca-Cola. You can't just suddenly stop the line for an hour and say sorry, we. We're not going to fulfill your order, Mr. Tesco's, tomorrow because we're doing a couple of inductions. Um, and farming, extremely busy, particularly at certain times of the year where um, you're very driven by weather and conditions and all that kind of kind of things. So there's things that you do. What would, um, for both of you, be the kind of intervention points for some form of programme, um, which again, we're not expecting people to be HR professionals, but what kind of intervention points, when would you catch up and meet with people um, uh, within the business. Uh, Murray, what, what about you at Coca-Cola? Yeah, so we, we've we made a suggestion of a, of, a, of a bit of a timeline. So in at the end of the first day, there should be some sort of conversation had, um, some sort of, you know, thank you, you know, uh, how's it been? You know, how have you felt? Have you got any questions? Is anything worrying you? Have you, you know, ha have we, have we missold you the job kind of conversations, but done in not a, a, a formal way like let's go and grab five minutes at the end of your shift or um you know let, let's let's stop you know they're usually buddied up with someone so we've got the luxury I guess in the first few weeks to be able to take them away and, and, and sit down and you know it's amazing what a cup of tea does so you know to, just to relax people and um you know to get the conversation flowing so, so day one's a critical day because often people have loads of questions is it the reality that they were sold etc um and then you know the role of the buddy is a really important role um, in our organization and, and you know wh whoever we we marry marry them up with for, for that first week and um, it's often someone that's been in the role a longer time has got good experience um, and can share and impart some of that knowledge um, but also you know that the manager then doesn't abdicate the responsibility of the conversation so there'll be check-ins with the manager and the and the buddy just to say you know how you know how's mark getting on you know he's halfway through his first week you know what, what's he been asking you know how, how, what's the sense of what's the feeling you're getting from him um and then at the end of the first week um th there would be a, co a, a longer conversation um that again just goes through you know what's happened this week you know where are you on your your training you know how are you feeling um you know have you got questions you know are you have got any concerns about the next week's induction plan and again it's it's about having that conversation about you know what the experience now but then also what, trying to remove some of the apprehension apprehension of what's to come and um, because again you can be in the moment and, and and enjoying all of this but what happens when that buddy's not there and oh, i've got this responsibility for this and you know will i do it to the right standard so at every stage you're trying to have those conversations um 
and a lot of the, the lot of the best conversations happen when you just work next to somebody um, and so it doesn't have to be a scheduled in conversation it can just be a you're on the shop floor for example and, and we encourage all of our managers not to be managers behind desks we, we you know we encourage them to be on the shop floor having those conversations and getting stuck in because you know we've we've all got a job to do we either at coke we either make it move it or sell it so no matter and that includes me in hr you know my, my job's to help people sell stuff um, and my job's to help people make stuff um so so i think having that mantra is really important we also have like more formal interventions. So we always have a 12 week um, period. So a probation period, that's just our standard as a company. I, I don't know if that happens in your industry, but we, and that's an opportunity for both parties. So, you know, if it's not right for the employee, then, you know, we can part ways at that point and likewise for, for the employer. Um, but again, that comes with, uh, you know, you have to have had conversations leading up to that point. You can't suddenly go 12 weeks goodbye. And um, so making sure those conversations happen is really important. And then we do, you know, we do annual appraisals. Um, but again, those annual appraisals are the formal conversations. It's so important to give that ongoing feedback and coaching. Um, so, you know, it's not about, oh, you've done that wrong. It's like, let's work together. Help me understand, you know, why are they making those choices? And I think as well with someone new coming in, getting their ideas, they're a fresh pair of eyes. So no matter what, where you are, sometimes they've got the best, you know, oh, other question, you know, why do you do it this way? And you'll miss that. You'll miss that learning opportunity. You'll miss that opportunity to develop your business if you're not with them and having having those conversations. So, um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Marie. What about yourself, David? What kind of intervention points have you recently put in place? Yeah, well, I, I come from a, from a more fearful side of things that I was I was wanting to make sure I was doing things right as well so um you know I, I'm, I'm there the first day uh, but not not overcrowding not micromanaging um uh, biting my lip uh, or holding my tongue um because seeing them do something their way and then realizing that's not how I want it done but uh, giving them that space to to do it and then in a conversational way suggesting slightly different so not to not to be on top of them too soon um and then just uh, touching uh, uh touching base with them uh um throughout the, the the first day um being open uh you know allowing them to have that conversation that relaxed um, but all my conversations that i i have I, I try to have with them anyway are within working time working hours because i value them their them as team members i value their time i'm paying for their time so I, I try and have it within the working shift rather than, you know, oh, that's five o'clock, they've clocked off. Oh, by the way, uh, whilst you're here, um, yeah, no one, no one likes that. I, 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 I loathe it when, when someone, when you're walking out the door and someone says, oh, one more thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I don't like it. So why would they like it? Um, so yeah, and then the, the first couple of days you're, you're with them, and then um, week one, you know, it's a nice milestone week one. So you, you have a you work with them not, again, not formal face to face, just a chat. You're doing something. You're you're rolling out bales of straw in the in the cattle court or something like that. You know, and then you just you you rather than small talk, you you bring around to actual um, work. How you're feeling? How how's things setting in? How how's the family coping? Um, and then um, and again a fortnight. Uh, you try that and I did it after a month and I, again I just did it on uh, Friday again there um, and and it, it's great you know obviously you're you're, you're always talking to them you, you see them most days um, but it's that honesty and, and similar to Marie there's always learning experiences and, and I right from day one or even the interview I was like you know you've you've been to more farms and worked more farms uh, almost uh, so how do you do things and, and, and you know if you see something please tell me because as much as I think I'm doing the right thing with my work uh, and, and the farm, and I, well, I, I know I'm doing the right thing, but I can always learn. And I'm always open for little tweaks, little efficiencies. It's the multiple gains, marginal gains. Um, so so I'm, I'm always open to, to learn. And uh, But it's the transparency as well. And, and we have a great open, honest. Uh, and, and so I was, I was really quite interested in why he left his last employment. Uh, and, and now he now he, he trusts me more because uh, he, he knows me because we've worked together for, for two months now. And, and he's like, well, I was lied to in interviews. And and 
every time he's he's left an employment because it hasn't hasn't uh, lived up to what he was told it would be an interview and uh, with all honesty he's just uh, I'm really so pleased he's, he's gushing because everything that I've said in the interview he, he says that he, I, it was exactly spot on if not better than it is now and um, so he, he's really happy and that gave me a huge sense of I'm doing the right thing he's happy his family's happy he, and uh, just that I, I wouldn't say he's got spring in his step but he's uh he, he's pretty he's pretty chuffed to be here and it's it's what he wants and what he expected so so uh, yeah it's um it's just continual that continual uh, staff team development and and it's a team and and you just don't leave a team isolated you're, you're always working with them you're always engaging and and uh encouraging and and it's um yeah yeah so that that really interesting there that that interesting mix between informal and formal interventions that you don't just literally have to be day one day seven day two, day three blah, blah, blah you must come into the office for two hours and we must complete this 475 page form. it's the nature of the beast that we're especially in in agriculture uh, um we're not a uh that def definite de definite um production line of of numbers through it so we're a lot more um um sporadic sometimes with with livestock especially um so you don't always have that set day in a, in a in a in a day set time in a day so we've got to be more flexible more more uh, organic um so so yeah um but it, it's a mindset as well it, it's it's um we, we're managers we've got so many things on our, on our heads uh, and on our shoulders but you know the team the, the whole thing grinds to a halt without a team so it, it really is uh, it's, a, it's a more focus on the value of that team to you and your business so you have to invest in them you have to get it right because it's going to cost you if you don't have them so, yeah, yeah definitely and, and that being honest and establishing those relationships which is what the world's built on if we haven't got relationships we've got trust you're not going to be able to fulfill all those things that's really really good we've had a couple of questions come in um online the first one which i can completely empathize with this so through this this this, this bringing these new people into the business um there's a whole raft of information that you need to chuck at them um both to establish them into the business and also for compliance for you i can remember um, a previous job and i won't name the employer where i've presented with an arch lever file which is like two telephone directories and asked her could you just go through that and thinking oh my life which was everything from risk assessments to um how to use the the staff um various discount um codes how would you both prevent that overload of information through through this onboarding process how 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 would you do that Marie? yeah you make me laugh because i remember when i first joined um ccp where nothing was ready for me on day one so i joined and there was no computer there was no phone there was no email address there was nothing um and i look back now and i think gosh actually that was a real luxury at the <laughs> at the time but at the same time it was like oh were they not expecting me you know what and then that in itself that first impression wasn't great um but i think what you have to do and, and what we've certainly learned is that all that information you know it, yes it's important um but you have to stagger it because you overwhelm people and actually what what's really important for day one what's really important for week one you know get that out of the way with first you know there'll be lots of you know for us in, in supply chain we have a lot of you know legal um you know machine how to use machinery health and safety you know some of the stuff that's probably not that exciting let's be honest but you have to do it and i think that's the balance between that practical time doing the role experiencing role working with getting to know the team balanced with then you know you're going to have to have an hour in front of the computer or you're going to have to have an hour of, of paperwork and what we've tried to do um and i guess you know the the digital world now it makes it so much easier so we don't have to have this massive raft of you know paper that people need to fill in and we've tried to do ours as, as bite-sized modules so um you know it might be a 10 minute module on you know um health and safety it might be um a 10 minute module on you know, um 
safe working practices it might be an hour session on working at heights for example um and, and but we'll stagger it based on what what is our induction plan for that job role um and so you know if it's a frontline operative you know you can you you know where about in the journey that 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 legality trainer needs to come in and um, but I, again it goes back to what we said you know how would you feel you know so treat people the way you want to be treated how would you feel if it was day one and you suddenly someone just said to you welcome to the company here get crack on with this it's not what you want to be doing the first few days you need to be building a culture you need to be building a rapport you need to get to know each other and so yeah we, we try and minimize that that part to the back end of the first week um, and, and then start to drip feed it in over four weeks so all of our plans are four week four week original plans with with some of it moving into 12 weeks so I suppose by having that bite-sized chunks not only do you probably get better engagement with the process but also probably the learning of it because it's short and sharp is easier and then thinking of the business probably taking someone off the line um, or away from their workstation for 10 minutes or 15 minutes is easily covered by the rest of the team that you can then rotate that around yeah exactly what about, what about yourself um, David, we have had one question about um, do you have a bank of protocols that you'd share with your new member of staff? Um, uh, and yeah, how would you prevent information overload um, to that in, in new employee? I, I prioritise what they need to do for the job. For example, um, safety, uh, paramount, production, uh, and well-being. So um, you know, write it out to start. I, I, Livestock, um, obviously a huge, uh, or not, a potential risk anyway. Um, and uh, we don't, if, if any of the, the cows, uh, animals, uh, have, show any aggression, uh, you know, it's not worth the risk. So we, we, we uh, um, breed them out or we, we put them down the line. Um, same with machinery. If, it, if they're dripping hose or something like that, it gets repaired. And, and it's, it's that culture of, um, I, I don't want you to just, oh, it'll be all right. I want you to highlight that. And so you're building that culture that that I'm looking after my team. Um, so that's a, that's that from the outset. Um, and I want them to to um, know what they, how to operate things. So if there's training to be done to on a particular machine they're gonna be using, that's a priority. So you bring them up to speed um, and the physicality of it, um, and the, in, a, in that working environment, is, is paramount for the for their own safety, for the farm safety, for the animal safety, um, and for the other team member safety. So they're they're what I focus on initially to get them started, and uh, and then the less glamorous stuff uh, gets uh, gets uh, brought into the to the. Um, to the, uh, the fold, and you have reminded me. I have a, a nice, large, large uh, um, union uh, assurance um, risk assessments, cost assessments, and uh, blah blah blah. They've got to read through and, and sign off that they've read it. Um, so that could be this weekend's uh, little present for them. Uh, <laughs> be, uh, maybe an hour, hour or two of overtime uh, reading through uh, that arc file anyway. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, it's prioritising to get them up and running as a as a valued team member to start paying paying their way, shall we say? Um, and again, I suppose it comes back to that individualisation. So you're focusing on what that individual needs to make sure that they're compliant, that they can do their job effectively, um, and, and that they're happy and healthy and safe. Modern, um, modern farm machinery is not just a jump and jump in it and goes. Um, so there, there is a, a good bit of uh, learning and, and similarities to other things, but yeah, you, you have to spend a bit of time and not just expect them because they've worked on another farm, it might be a different color of tractor that they're used to driving. So as much as it's still a tractor, uh, the different computer systems, the different uh, transmissions, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, yeah, yeah. That needs to be covered. I'm sure that's exactly the same. Uh, Coca-Cola, you can't just let someone loose on some fancy piece of machinery without giving them a bit of a, an introduction on how, how, how to use it. I'm sure. So um, we're, we're, we're rapidly running running through time. So even though both, all, whether you're in a UK farming business or whether you're working for Coca-Cola as a big uh, multinational, there's definitely some similarities in terms of 
um, what your the challenges you're facing and, and what you're actually doing to to develop um, onboarding processes um, uh, for your staff. What could each industry learn from each other? What could farmers learn from Coca-Cola, and what could Coca-Cola learn? learn from farmers. David, what do you, what, what do you reckon Coca-Cola could learn from us as farmers? Um, well, let's make some sweeping statements about, uh, <laughs> about the, the big corporate entities. Um, I'd say um, soften the wording, uh, you know, like skills matrix. Uh, so I've got a skills matrix. No, it's, it's a list of certificates that my team members have. And uh, uh, so I can tick off the, the stuff they need for, for their safety, for my safety, for my progression, for my, my investment in them as, as part of CPD. Um, I'd say that um, onboarding and induction, uh, without using big words like that, it, it's conversations, it's chatting, it's, it's uh, welcome. It's how you welcome someone into your culture, into your, your business. Um, yeah, the softer, softer side of things I think they could uh, pick up on. Brilliant. And not be intimidated by big words. Let's put them. Let's let's get some um, some plain English. Plain English. Yeah. Thanks. What about yourself, Marie? What do you think um, farmers could learn from from you and Coca Cola? Yeah, it, it, it's a funny one, isn't it? Because. Um, I'm quite a simple person myself. I, I you know, those fancy flouncy words, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything for, for me and it, it doesn't land with people either. So I, th I think I think you you're fair with your challenge, Dave. So I appreciate that. I've written it down. So um so yeah, thanks for that. Um I, I think just from a just because you're a large corporate or you're a larger, you know, agricultural business doesn't mean that you do it better than anybody else. Because actually, you know, someone that's got, a, a, you know, a, an organisation with you know, two or three people um, can actually sometimes have the best the best ideas and the best solutions and onboarding. And so, you know, you, you can take a, a total global view of it or you can actually look at individual teams and, and you know, and, uh, how you build that culture for me is the, the most important important part and um, we've invested you know lots of money in research into into culture but it is it, it is all about how you make people feel and and i think dave said it earlier and he kind of stole my um <laughs> my my sort of a bit of a device but it is it is very much about you know treat people how you want them you know how you'd want to be treated yourself you know put yourself in their shoes you know you're investing all of your time into these individuals you know people good people don't come along every day um and so you know when you spent the time you know with with them getting them to to, to join in your, your your organization you want to keep them so you know just have that normal everyday conversation with them get to know them you know you know what's their family you know you know what's important to them you know, what drives them what's their more you know what's their morals what's their values how does that fit with you and your organization and you'll get more from people that way than than any tick list or any big fancy fancy document or you know online e-learning program it is about the conversation and, and for me that's that's where you need to invest your time. You know, we, we've put our managers and, and leaders on, on specific training about having effective conversations, but there's loads of great content available online that's free to access. So, you know, don't be afraid to, to, to build that relationship, I think. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Uh, and we just had another question coming in, um, which we're skipping a little bit, a little bit backwards, um, which links towards the buddy, the buddying scheme that you've got with Coca-Cola. And also your, your other obviously. And also, um, David, you bring in a new employee into um, into a team. So how do you, how do you get a long-standing employee um, to take to that new starter? How do you integrate them into the team? And I suppose with the buddying system, how do you um, how do you select the buddies? Um, well, we don't necessarily have a buddy system uh, with. Uh, quite a, a small efficient team um, but uh, the prime example is the whatsapp group so the team whatsapp group uh, when do you bring them into that and and and, and when do you start that process of, of telling the established team that there's a new member coming you know to it'll, with the best will and, will and intentions it's going to upset the apple cart a little bit um, with uh, the rebalancing of dynamics but um, you, you know same as what you want to be treated you, the sooner you know the sooner you can start dropping in and, and bring that uh, progression forward so it's it's all all together um yeah it's just the sooner you do something and then in, in little steps but plenty of them um and uh, and just you got to start you, you, you got to start sometime and the sooner you start 
the easier it gets. Brilliant. Yeah, I like the little the little steps piece. You can only eat the cake bite by bite, not all at once. Um, well, <laughs> <go> on. <laughs> Depends on what type of cake. What about yourself, Murray? What? How do you yeah. choose these, and 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 how would you how would you bring a a new member into a well-established team? Yeah. I, I think the the body piece is a really important one because the the body feels empowered. So the, there isn't then a threat of somebody new coming into the team. So like like Dave's point there, but yeah, it, it can upset a team and, and people think, oh gosh, you know, how is the team dynamic going to change? How my role in the team versus somebody new coming in? What what will all that be like? But actually, you're then moving some of that empowerment to the employees. So um, so people come forward. So you know, we'll say you know, we'll know we've got a vacancy and um and, and people will you know in that team will will was, you know, will come forward and say, you know, I'm I'm experienced in X, Y, and Z, and and you know, and I, I'm happy to impart that knowledge. Or, you know, the individuals that are really passionate about welcoming people and telling people how things really are around here, and you know, whether people can play different body roles in, in that in that aspect. So, um, and we do have we've, we've got like a one hour um session that we run with people that come forward for buddies to help them with. You know, how do they? help give feedback to people you know how do they help you know manage some maybe some of the difficult questions and but again all of that stuff's really you know quite simple again it's all conversations so you know a, a buddy's role is having conversations with people to help them settle in and help them navigate around and, and understand you know how things are here but also is a way to ask questions without always having to go to the boss as well so i, I was i was really proud of my team um because I, I was trying to get uh sorry I, work and, and jobs so they could all work together to, to get a, a bit of time to, to get to know each other. But uh, I, I, I failed. Uh, I, could, I couldn't get the job early enough in the week or in his first week. And uh, my, other, my other team members, they, they went and sought him out and they went and found him to, to welcome and just introduce themselves. And I was, just, I was so, so proud of my guys and um, that they, they, but it's just polite. It's just, it's good natured. It's, it's welcoming and, uh, yeah, it's just yeah, I'm happy with that. So so yeah. have have a bit of confidence in your in your own existing team as well, and uh, if you set your culture right, they'll do a lot of work for you as well uh, in that on onboarding on that welcoming uh, phase. Um, I think sometimes just to build on that day it's, it's best for us anyway sometimes people need to be given the permission to do that so like you know we, we we'll often say to people you know so and so starting on this day you know you feel free to you know buy them a cup of tea feel free to you know have lunch with them feel free to you know share your knowledge or introduce yourself you know some sometimes people need that permission and um so yeah i i, I think they can do if, if you've developed like you've said there dave you know if you've developed the right culture in your team the team will take the heavy load off your shoulders um and and you know and, and they are the ones that will tell it re as it really is. So when you're not around, you know, it is what Dave's just told me to do a load of rubbish and I'm going to find a quicker way to do it. Or am I going to do it the way that we've all talked about being the right way to, to do it because we've all been involved in that conversation. So yeah, your team, your team are so important on, in on board and you can't, you can't and you shouldn't have to do it all on your own. No, definitely not. Brilliant. Thank you. I'm very conscious that we're running out of time. So very briefly, what would be your one take home message each of you to UK farmers about um, how we how they could think a bit more about onboarding how they could maybe tweak what they're doing already what would your one 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 take home be Marie we'll go to you first I definitely think you're not on your own so sometimes we, we feel like we're on our own there's a whole host of information there and I'm, I'm going to plug the the labour life cycle um, a, a, again but you know use the resource hubs that are available to you because people will have had experiences and they'll, there'll be some great content and, and you know and ideas out there already you know Dave's you know, shared really openly his experiences and what he's learned over um, his onboarding journey with, with his new starter I think sometimes you don't have to reinvent the wheel you know use what's available to you already and and just start that conversation brilliant thank you very much what about yourself dave um, I, i'm as much as i agree everything uh, I'd, I'd say um be realistic and and as a farming business labor is going to be in, in short supply and you need to change or potentially need to change your business change your mindset change your manner to make sure you attract the right candidate the right team member because we're in a big marketplace here and we are competing with every under every other industry. So if you want to get the right team member, new team member, make sure you make yourself attractive. It's not about 
just finding the right person. They, they, as Marie mentioned earlier, they're interviewing you and you got to make sure you're the right type of business they want to work at. So uh, a little bit more looking at yourself uh, and making sure that you're uh, a good place to work, I, I'd say, is the, is the top tip. Brilliant. Um, thank you for that, uh, David. Thank you very much, for Marie. That's been a really, really interesting um, uh, session, an hour, and it's actually skipped past really, really quickly. I've written several notes um, in terms of like summary. The, the key things that I've taken taken away is that it, it it is a process, but it doesn't have to be that formal process. I've written down HR on the hoof, being a dairyman that I are, I am, but it's having those. A mixture of, of formal interactions um, but also the little conversations getting to talk with the, the member of staff while they're greasing up the combine or while, while they're rolling out um, um, the straw for the cattle and, and just checking in on those 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 personal points to make sure that they they are happy and, and joining into the business and they are then following the, the various compliance things but that, that leads on to the little bite-sized pieces don't put everything in one big big lump break it down over a short period but then also like you said Dave make sure that that's very specific to that individual um, which I appreciate the bigger the, the team you get that becomes more 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 difficult but if you can individualize that that that, that, that process that's going to hopefully make it uh, make it more effective and then the things about trusting your existing team to do the right thing um, and and utilizing um, the products and services that are out there already which cleans me to the the, the slide I've got up at the moment of the Labour Lifestyle, which is a fantastic resource that we've pulled together some information. For the, the onboarding section, it will give you some, some tips and some pointers around going through that process, but also if you're wanting to adapt and create your staff handbook or that information that you're going to provide your employee as you move forward, there's a QR code there um, to push it forward. If you do want any information, please go either get in contact with myself or any of the Agri Leaders team, Kay and Isaac. Uh, Kay Lane or Isaac Van Heerden and we'd be more than happy to to help you out but I just want to say Marie and um, David thank you very much for giving up your evening um, uh, to, to go through uh, some of those key points really really interesting uh, interesting discussion um, as we move on uh, next week um, so the third uh, session uh, in the labour life cycle we'll be focusing on managing people uh, and that will be with um, Isaac Van Heerden um, so the third member of the team uh, and we've got David Homer who's a dairy farmer from down in Wiltshire and we've got Heather Wildman another Scot um, from up, at, uh, up in Dumfries uh, from Savory Associates they're going to discuss about how uh, you can get the best out of your team uh, and how you can manage people to get uh, get the best out of your team like I said please um, have a look at the labour life cycle uh, and see what you think about those resources the final slide um, as you all well know uh, AHCB uh, we put out a vote in the Shape the Future uh, opportunity, which uh, the sector councils from that vote in April have been formalising uh, that information with uh, external influence from DEFRA and from the, the various stakeholders to, to shape where um, the sector plans and, and AHDB will be moving forward. As next uh, Wednesday, we'll be hosting the Delivering the Future of Pharma meetings, which will be individual sector meetings uh, online that will, the sector councils will share uh, their plans um, and, and how uh, we're going to fulfil uh, what uh, you as levy players uh, wanted uh, uh, from your levy over the next uh, five years. So the, the timings of those sessions, 10th of November, they start the cereals and oil seeds uh, meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning. Then we move on to dairy at 12 noon. Uh, then the beef and lamb uh, sector has to kick off at 2 uh, and then the pork sector bringing up the rear at four o'clock uh, in the afternoon. Uh, really interactive sessions. You have the ability to, to listen to the sector councils and the sector council chairs of, of, of how they've come to the decisions from the information from the vote, but also they have the opportunity to, to ask questions of the sector councils and various members uh, of the AHDB uh, team. So please, if you haven't registered already, uh, please register. And all I then have to say is, is thank you very much again to, to David and Marie for giving up their time. It's been a great evening. Um, this will be uh, on the website uh, very, very shortly. And if uh, you have any questions, please get in contact. But other than that, have a fantastic evening and we'll speak to you soon. Many thanks. Uh, and we'll speak to you all again.